Top of the morning to ya. This be death daughter at the death shop. Or the kitchen of the death shop. Okay, forget about it, guys. This death adder in the kitchen of the death shop, you know that means it's time for another episode of... Oh! There goes the rubber band. Cook to death! <laughs> uh, sorry for the fake accent there. Let's give you some light. How about some light? Don't worry, they'll come on. Anyway, it is a couple days from St. Patrick's Day, so we're going to cook us up a blonde stone. Cone beef round. Sorry. Horrible fake accent there, you know. Been watching too much Try Channel lately. I hate that, Vanessa. <laughs> but most of those guys are really awesome. Uh, let's see here. So anyway, uh, Crock-Pot. The only way to do this, really. This is why I'm starting off in the morning, because, uh, yeah. If you don't start off with a Crock-Pot in the morning and go low and slow, you're going to end up with really tough, ugly meat. Second thing is, ugh. Not, not uh, doing any names here, you know, the, <laughs> but uh, corned beef round. You want a round or a flat? You do not want a tip. The reason why is if you ever gotten corned beef before and got one of those chewy tips, you ever gotten one of those chewy tips that's just like almost, in, I mean, totally inedible, actually. Even your dog probably wouldn't eat it unless he ate it all in one gulp because you really can't chew it. Yeah, that's what tips produce. It's never buy a tip. All right. First things first, we've got to get this puppy in there. I lined this with a, uh, uh, I'm going to actually use the name on this. It's a, it's a Reynolds Wrap slow cooker uh, uh, cover, pretty much. So, now here's the deal with this. When you open one of these, you want to keep everything, and I do need everything in here. Any liquid, any gel, any spice. You want, you want to get as much of that stuff in here as possible because that's going to be all the stuff uh, that makes this thing totally 100% delicious. And yeah, sometimes you might have to actually get in here to get this stuff. But trust me, you need this. This is all your flavor. Generally, it's a little bit more liquid than this. I've never actually cooked a blinder stone one. I've cooked some from Sonnenberg's, which, uh, yeah, shameless plug there. Sonnenberg's, great, uh, great place in Spokane. Great butcher. Okay, that's good enough. All right. Now I got all that mm -mm collagen stuff that totally went over there and made itself uh, reincorporated back into gel. Don't worry, hardly any of that will end up on the plate, but you need it to keep things moist. That's the that's the main point here. You're gonna <laughs> I know people hate that word moist, but you need it to keep things moist. Alright, so here's the deal. I want to throw some red potatoes in there. I've already already washed these. I'm gonna throw some carrots in there just for aromatics. Just to add a little bit of extra flavor and make everything smell nice and I don't expect these to be eaten. I'm pretty sure Doug probably will, though. And one white onion. Why white? Ah, a little known fact about Death Adder here, guys. Death Adder is allergic to yellow onions. It's only a mild allergy, but if I eat them, not only will it burn my stomach, it'll burn my nostrils, too. And uh, anything that does uh, burns my nostrils is not good for me. Because I like to breathe and I have lots of allergy issues, so. Alright, so just take the ends off. Leave a little bit on that side. The root side. Put this puppy down, like so. Boom, and all we're going to do is, woo -ah. It didn't exactly go flat enough to do perfect, but we quartered that sucker. And <laughs> got a little bit of that gel in there from the knife. And all I'm going to do is throw one in each corner. Or one in each space that I can get a space. Okay. Now, my carrots here, I've decided, yes, yeah, since I'm doing them as aromatics, I'm just going to chop the ends off. You don't have to chop the ends off, I guess, if you're going to do them as aromatics, but you wouldn't eat that anyway, so in case somebody wanted to go ahead and eat them, they probably could. And then these carrots, I'm just going to cut in half the long way. And this is kind of a feat to do this. you got to be very careful. One, that you don't poke yourself, and two, that you don't slice yourself. 
Boom. Just gonna throw those on top. Let me throw the potatoes in. This is so easy, it's not even funny, guys. This is literally the toughest part here. And all you have to do is get the first slice right. And then you can just kind of go a little bit, holding tight on both sides. And press down. Even if you don't get it all the way through, you can always just do this because, like I said, you don't, you're not going to eat it. So, just for aromatics. Throw our potatoes on top. <laughs> I told you this was going to be easy. Now, the toughest part of the whole thing is getting water in there. Yeah, but I got a solution for that. You see, a couple of weeks ago, I was drinking big old, big huge things of Fiji water and taking them to work because our work literally, it's like Walmart in there. It has no humidity. Hey, shopping at Walmart. <laughs> but it has no humidity whatsoever. Which I understand, there's a lot of slot machines in there, so got to keep them in a good state here. Wow, naturally 2.2 liters of water, or a very close approximation, is very close to getting all this done here. Alright, so, everything's right, and right near the top. Leave about an inch space there. And this is all we got to do, guys. It's as simple as this. Cover. Turn it on to low. Then I uh, failed to mention here is always make sure that you clean your your clock no, clean your crock pot. Let's see if I can get that out. Tongue's becoming a little dry. Clean your crock pot out because uh, if you do not clean your crock pot out, then uh, well, yeah, all sorts of bad things can happen. But that's also one of the reasons why I use these slow cooker liners because they're they're awesome. Heather's the one who actually found these. All you really do is put it around the outside, push it down like you're, you know, doing the foil around the bottom of a baking pan. And push it into place so that way it's all in a nice dip. Or when you're putting your uh, your liner in your garbage can, truthfully too, you should always make sure that all the air is out of the bottom. And if it stinks underneath there, you should clean it and use some spray to <laughs> kill the stuff that's in there. But anyway, that's it. We're just going to let this sit. We're going to let it cook low and slow for, well, let's see, dinner time's probably not going to be until, uh, until about 5.30 tonight. And it's a little bit after 9.30 right now, so I'm going to let this go for eight hours. Yes, I'm cooking potatoes on low for eight hours. It's fine. Uh, since I'm at home, I'll go ahead and check it every once in a while, but literally, if you have a good crock pot that you trust not to set your house on fire, <laughs> then, <laughs> can't believe I said that, but, uh, if you do, if you do, then you literally can leave this on and just go to work, go do whatever you need to, and then when you come back home, you'll have this wonderful smelling yum yum, ready to rock and roll corned beef, which, yeah, make sure you slice it correctly, because if you incorrectly slice your your corned beef, you're doing yourself a disservice. You always want to cut it, uh, you always want to cut it uh, against the, uh, let's see, is it against the grains? Yeah, against the grains, so that way, uh, when you've got the, uh, when you've got the, the meat, the part that you're slicing should always look like, it should always look like the little fibers are like, uh, like you would see if you were to cut a piece of wood open from the side. You don't want it lengthwise. You don't want to see the rings. Or, do you? You want to see the rings. You don't want to see the, uh, the... I'm really not explaining this right. So, <laughs> in this case, let's do this. All right, let's find an envelope. Because they're always sending me stuff that I don't want. We'll dry you a little picture here. Okay, so when you cut this, you want to make sure all the fibers on the side look like this. If they look like this, then you've done it wrong and you're in for a chewy ride. So you want to always cut it where you'll see that type of pattern. 
You can do it at an angle, on a bias is fine. Just make sure that you always have that pattern because uh, nobody likes tough and chewy corned beef. And that's also the same reason why I said you never get a point cut. I know that they sell the point cuts cheaper, but you're going to pay for that because you're not getting as much meat as you think you are. Anyway, this is Death Adder at the kitchen of the Death Shop. Quick and easy. Saying Paris de Mille for you. <laughs> Hope you liked the video. Yeah, it's not cooking much because this is doing all the cooking for me. That's why Crockpot's your best friend, guys. <laughs> anyway, take care and I will catch you later.